Welcome back, Blade fans. This old sword with you with a very interesting knife review and overview. First, a shout out to Bob DeMarco, the knife junkie, who sent this knife along for my review and take a look at and to share because he's a good friend and a knife buddy. And I've uh, loaned him some things in the past, and he's kind of returning the favor. So sometime after this review, this will go back to Bob. Thank you very much for the loan, sir. And I hope to do it justice. Now, Bob reviewed the owner of Arcane Designs, whose company um, created this, designed it, and uh, created it. It is a custom knife to the best of my knowledge, in the several hundred dollar range. And you can go to Arcane Designs. I'll leave the link in the description. And it tells a little bit about the backstory of Israel, who is the owner of Arcane Designs. I'll make sure I've got that 100% right. Well, we'll give Israel a quick uh, shout out here as well. Uh, from his webpage, he says, My name is Israel, and I'm the founder of Arcane Design, which was formed out of the desire to explore the unknown and discover its aesthetic. And uh, yes, he appears to have done that with this blade, because what we have here is not a fixed blade, but a folding blade. One hand is going to be interesting with this one. Double edge, fully sharpened, folding knife. Titanium handle and clip. Double Killians. Snaps right out with a terrific action. Look at that fuller down the middle. And uh, that beautiful brush-like satin grind. This is M390, as far as I know. It is not marked, and many custom knives will not be marked with um, just about anything. And on this one, we don't even see, other than on the clip, any reference to the manufacturer. And uh, that's really a neat design, kind of the, the black hole kind of an idea. Uh, a lot of his designs are very sci-fi or uh, they hearken to the uh, horror movie, shall we say, uh, genre as I understand. So don't have a lot of background on Israel, but you can see a interview with the owner, Israel, on the Knife Junkies podcast. So, uh, I believe that's a video one and not an audio, but uh, check out Bob's website. I'll leave a link to both his site as well as to the review of the owner of this company. This comes in a few different flavors. This is one of them. I've seen it in a Damascus for like 600. I think if I'm not mistaken, this comes in around 400. However, with Custom-made knives, the inventory is not going to be consistent. You're going to have to put an order in and wait. And sometimes you can't even put an order in. So uh, this is a blackened titanium handle. Beautifully sculpted with these hollows in the symmetrical handle. Functional wise, you can get your index finger and thumb right up in there. And uh, as both Bob and I like, it functions very well in the Pical or Pacal downward point position. In this position here, the clip is a little bit of a hot spot, but if I roll it, uh, not at all. So you do have that option when you're using this knife because it has two full double edges and is quite sharp 
flat ground, flat center alongside of the fullers, double fullers, and it goes beyond the flat almost all the way out to the point of the blade. A little bit more light on those uh, the really nice grind lines. Full sharpening choils here. Of course, you're not going to want to stick your finger in there. They're not designed for that. But it gives a very almost ancient look to it. As though it's a medieval dagger. That's the feeling that I'm getting. And very hand-filling handle. The way that it swells out like that. And then you have straight lines down here from this point, flat, and uh, a nice pommel, usable pommel, if you want to use it. I wouldn't uh, pound anything into the ground with it, but it certainly is a um, nice little accoutrement as far as fighting knives go. I'll give you some size ideas on this knife. It's not a large knife. It has a sizable handle. And um, <clears throat> we've got a three and a half inch blade. And we have a let's see, about a four and a quarter inch handle. So put that all together you've got about uh, seven and a quarter seven and a half inches and it is hand filling with plenty of handle left over the blade again is not uh, you know large size but three and a half is plenty and you know as with the Japanese tradition which is just a lot different from you have um, kind of a reverse of that where you've got a longer handle than a blade. Usually we're seeing on some of the Kiridashis and Tantos a longer blade and a shorter handle. I think that's the comparison I was trying to get to. Stumbling over my logic a little bit. But um, it is a uh, fairly thick blade. I left my measuring devices over on the side, so pardon me. I like to be kind to knives that get loaned in, so that's why I didn't put the tape on this guy. But we've got a nice plastic caliper here, so uh, it is 0.54 across the handle thickness. And uh, I like to do millimeters. So we've got a exactly four millimeter blade. It's a good heavy stock. Not overly so, but for a three and a half inch blade, four millimeters is uh, definitely a uh, plenty of blade stock. And I'll see if I can drop this bad boy in the scale. And we'll see what we got. And uh, I'm going to suggest to myself that we uh, fold it up first. Scale is zeroed out. So we have a relatively hefty 5.38 ounces. It's not going to be a pocket sinker, but it is definitely solid in the hand. I'd say the weight's just about right. The thing I have to keep doing with this one, and Bob probably had this uh, conundrum as well, is which one do I open it with? I have to look and see which slot is longer. <laughs> but it really fires out uh, beautifully. Now, one other knife I have that by no means is in the same price or quality category but is a favorite dagger grind of mine is the Best Tech Fin. 
I may have to loan one of these out to Bob <coughs> because I've been trying to get him to appreciate this particular knife, even though it is not sharpened on both edges, as is the antimatter. But, as you can see, similar in some regards. At least I can push on the back of it when closing it. Yes, this is not a knife that you want to accidentally do that with when you use it. You got to keep your fingers back on the handle. But just really an interesting mix of these dark muted tones in the titanium, this, that stone wash, that clip with that very interesting almost uh, physics related design that could very well be their logo. I am not sure. Should have researched that. Bob has done a review on this as well and it will likely be more extensive than mine. But I wanted to get this out and also offer my appreciation for the loan. I had been wanting to see one of these. Uh, they do make a Damascus version as well. And uh, I think uh, one of my viewers, uh, one of my subscribers, had uh, offered to loan that out to me. My bad for not taking them up on it. <laughs> I, uh, I guess have a little bit of reluctance taking in loaners on expensive blades, but uh, I do my very best to take care of them, and I haven't damaged anything yet. <laughs> One last look at the antimatter, and uh, for the heck of it, we will uh, put it up next to, oh, let's see, what we'll put it up next to, how about the Griptilian, standard fare. And it is coming in slightly shorter than the Griptilian, maybe by three-eighths of an inch or so. Just because the Griptilian's got a wee bit longer handle. I love this uh, stacked um, layer, this plate that uh, surrounds the pivot. Very nice touch. And a completely symmetrical knife, with the exception of the clip. And that's only going to be on one side. And that is attached from underneath. So there you have the Arcane Designs Antimatter. A very unique custom knife. You might be interested. Don't forget to check the link that I put out there to the Arcane Design site. And also the link to uh, Bob's review of this, as well as Bob's uh, interview of Israel, the owner of Arcane Designs. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. We'll be back with you soon.